All right, so I'm going to show a quick video on how to open up a T460S. So if you want to replace the keyboard, first what you want to do, there's actually a little um, screw here on the bottom that you'd have to unlock. So you would get either a Phillips or some flathead here and just turn it that way. So the way this keyboard works is there's this sliding um, panel. Let's just show you that. So this panel, you can see like these little notches here. So this actually slides upwards. Um, once you undo, when you turn that unlock screw, there's actually a little piece that runs along under the keyboard to make it so you can't slide this upward. So that's what the unlock does. Some of the models don't have that. And basically you would just pull this up. And once you pull this frame up, it will go underneath the keys. And there'll be like small little um, Phillips screws there. You'd probably have to use like a Phillips Zero to remove them. Um, yeah, and usually you don't have to remove this to do it. You can leave this in place, but if it's having problems, you can try removing that. Okay, so um, a lot of keyboards have that same on these Lenovo models. So once you, once, if you're not doing the keyboard and you just want to see the bottom, basically you just remove the screws from the bottom. There's one, two, three, four, five. Only five screws. Um, usually they'll stay in place because there's a little ring that holds them, but for some reason these two were messed up. So once you do that, you can get your nail between the gap here and then just kind of pull on it. It should swing up like this and there's like little hooks that go into it. So when you put it back, make sure to put it at an angle like that and then you drop it down. Okay. So once you do that, you can see there's two batteries. There's one battery here and one battery here. To remove the batteries, the top one has two screws. Once you remove the two screws, I use like my fingernail underneath like the little plastic thing here and just pull up. Okay, and then just set that aside. And same thing with this one. You remove, there's three screws on this one. So remove those three screws and then the little connectors here. So I take my nail closest to that and then just pull up on it. Okay, just like that. So here you can see there's multiple connectors to the screen. I'm not sure why there's so many. I don't think this is a touch screen. Where's that? It's my customer's computer, so I haven't really used it, but they have a broken screen. So I saw actually only one connector to the screen. So most likely another connector goes to the camera here, and then there's the microphone. Usually that's on one connector. All right. So it looks like there's one cable that goes here. And then for the screen, it also has another cable going here. And I'm not sure what the smaller one is going to actually. Oh, it's merged actually into one cable. So this is all, these two are just for the screen. Okay, so if your cable goes bad, you'd have to take all of those out. Then you got the charge port here, the connector. Um, it's actually held in place with this little bracket and that screw. Okay, got that. You got the fan. Looks like the fan screws, or it's either connected underneath or they taped it to this, um, the heat sink. Right? The processor is soldered in place just like all the other ones. Um, you got this one connector that goes for the um, SD card slot and the 3.5mm headphone jack. Got the headphone connector, uh, CMOS battery connector. So the head, um, the speaker runs all the way here, and it actually connects up here for both speakers. Then you got the fingerprint reader. I'm not sure why it has this little extra cable here that's just loose. Um, I have a feeling there used to be like some card reader or something here, or some models maybe have one, and it connects like that. All right. Then you got the um, touchpad connector. The keyboard connector is underneath the keyboard, so it's not on this side. Um, you got a slot for RAM. You got this dock connector. And then you got the SSD, which is a SATA um, M.2 drive. So yeah, I don't know if it's also compatible with NVMe, um, but yeah, this is this usually when it has two notches, it's a SATA um, type M.2. Though sometimes I've seen NVMe's also have two notches. Then you got the wireless card here. There's another slot for another wireless card, probably for like mobile data. And that's pretty much it. Um, 
If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget, these are my customer's computers, so I don't usually have them. So hopefully I'll be able to answer your question. But if it's something that you need me to show you, I, I again, I won't have the computer. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye.